All righty, wow, here we go. I'm so glad you guys are here to worship with us this morning. With a great crowd, I always love it when it's noisy. That means, that means you guys are enjoying your, your, your fellowship, and that's a wonderful thing. So glad you're here to worship. Looking forward to the Lord really moving this morning, touching us, changing us, making us new and different, right? That's what we're here for, isn't it? Um, this, I told you last week that um, I, I have, uh, I've got a new dentist, and I really like the guy. He's, he's a, I told you he's, he's a Christian dentist. And I kind of, I liked that a lot. The only thing was I just, at my recently at my last checkup, it was kind of interesting because I didn't know for sure he was humming, um, holy, holy, holy. I wasn't sure if he was worshiping or just, you know, doing my checkup and I'm, yeah, not sure. All right. Here is things that are going on, and I'm going to try to do it from memory because I don't want to walk all the way back over there wherever I might set my Bible down. Uh, we have, for sure, we have, oh, thank you. <laughs> here's, the, here's the issue with this, is Brother Bruce is saying there's no reason for you to trust your memory because you don't have one, evidently, is what... Uh, uh, Bruce says, just tell me, you have no memory, I'm bringing this to you. Don't trust it. All right, here's what's going on. Our church giving or contribution records are done. They are out there in the foyer. If you go out that door and to the right, you'll see a silver box. You can stop and pick those up anytime for your tax records. We're having a parents' night out. We haven't talked about this much, but parents, you have children from like four or five years old up through the sixth grade. This Friday night is a parents' night out. It will start at 5.30 till 9 o'clock. It's $10 per child. The only deal is your child has to be registered. So go online, whbcok.org, and go to this children's ministry area. There's a place where you can go ahead and get your kids registered for this week, for this Friday night. Larry Smith's beginning a new study this Wednesday night, 6.30 Bible study class on the book of Acts. So you're invited to come take part of that. Tonight, we have our quarterly business meeting. It will be at 5 p.m. If you have any questions about what's going on financially with our church, where we're at, be here tonight at 5 p.m. down at the Student Center, and we'll be open for any questions that you might have. Also, following that at 5.30 p.m., we're still moving forward with the Chosen series, so that's, a, that's something that I think a lot of people are enjoying, so that's tonight at 5.30. Our Women's Ministry, Women's uh, Missions Ministry, WMU Ministry, they're meeting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. If you'd like to be a part of that, know more about that, just show up here at 10 o'clock in the morning. The room's right outside our door here. Loss of a spouse. Our grief share ministry does this. It's a one-day event, okay? Loss of a spouse. If you know of anybody, or maybe yourself have gone through that grief, and you're wanting to know, how can I deal with the loss of my spouse? It will be on Saturday, January 28th, a couple of weeks away. It's a one-day morning event, and there's a sign-up out there, so please sign up so they can get their books ready for you. And then men, guys, we're getting ready to have a golf tournament here pretty soon, so we'll have more information about that. And folks, just do me a favor. I just hit the highlights. Do me a favor. Get your bulletin. Make sure you read your bulletin because there's a lot more information in there than what I've shared with you, okay? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are here to adore you, to worship you, and to seek your face. I pray this morning, Holy Spirit, I pray, just do a work in us today. Holy Spirit, change our hearts. Make us more like Christ. Give us a hunger to hear from you this morning, Father. And help us as we, as we sing. May we praise and lift up the name of Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Let's stand. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's the pain taker you feel lost, he's the way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. 
We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's the way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's the chain breaker. believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, if you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. There's a reason I can see There's a reason for this life inside me One name above all names Jesus, yes it's Jesus There's a reason for this hope There's a reason for this peace that I know One worthy of all praise Jesus, yes it's Jesus Come on I will lift my hands up I will raise my voice
when my time on earth is through when my final breath has left these lungs i'll forever be with you where the song goes on and on singing about Jesus. Have a seat. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here to do the military prayer, but before I start, um, Bruce just told me we have on the list up there Kevin Albauer, I believe is how you pronounce his name. He's home safely now. So... Amen. And his uncle is Jeff Christian, so we're glad he's back. Before I pray, um, I have a challenge for you all, and God put this on my heart. We have the list up here, back there, and what I would like for you all to do is pick one or more people to pray for this week and keep praying for them, you know, just keep going. And when I say that, you might think about it right here for, while you're sitting here and think, yeah, I'm going to pray for them. And then you walk out the door and you forget all about it. No, if you say you're going to do it, please do it because they're over there and they need all the prayers that we can give them. Been there. So let's pray. Dear God, just thank you so much for these men and women that are over, overseas serving our country, God. And please just give them your peace, comfort, and strength, letting them know that you are with them, for them, and by them. And God, please be with their families also, giving them peace, comfort, and strength, and letting them know that you're with them, for them, and by them. And again, God, just thank you for these men and women and our freedoms that we have to be here worshiping you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Break. 
Make every stronghold shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadow
Jesus, we speak your name today. God, you exist on the mountains. You exist in the streets. But we need you in our lives. And so today we speak the name of Jesus. Over all these things that distract us, over all these things that plague us, we speak your name. God, I've got to admit, sometimes I forget when I'm having issues. I forget that you love me with a love beyond anything in this world, beyond compare. Teach me, God, that in those moments I can speak your name, Jesus. Because you are Lord of all. You are Lord of the blessings. You are Lord of the afflictions, God, and you're there to help us through those things and even heal us from those afflictions. But God, when it's not in your will to be healed, we pray and ask you that you walk with us, that in those moments when we need you the most, that we speak the name of Jesus. It's in your name that we worship today, and it's in your name that I pray. Amen. morning. If you take your Bibles, turn to 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. I've been going through 1 John. We know that the Apostle John wrote 1 John. He also wrote the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John was his way of telling people who Jesus is, the Son of God. 1 John, he's reassuring believers of who Jesus is. This morning, do you know beyond the shadow of doubt that you're saved? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Or are there doubts? First John is written for that person who has doubts. John is fighting against a couple of groups of people. One is called the, the uh, doses. They believe that Jesus came in spirit, but it wasn't, he, he didn't have a body. It was kind of like a mirage. Jesus, Jesus kind of floated here and there, and it wasn't really, he didn't have a, a body. Well, that goes totally against what Scripture says. Because if Jesus didn't live as a human being, as a person, then he couldn't have died for our sins. Another group was called the Gnostics. They believed that knowledge was most important, and they also believed that the body was evil, but the spirit was good. And Jesus couldn't have been the Son of God because he... If he had a body, he couldn't be the son of God because he had evil and, and Jesus couldn't, the, the son of God couldn't be evil. And, and there were all these false teachings that came in. And John is fighting against that because these new believers, they're new in their faith and they're, they've got all these false teachings that are mixing in. How do these false teachings come up anyway? How does that happen? If you hear this noise, it's because our granddaughter's over here and, and her grandmother is uh, making all kinds of noise over there with her. 
But sometimes somebody has an idea and uh, they, they, oh, it must be this. Sometimes it's, you hear something wrong. It's, it, that happened this week. We, we had a celebration service for a dear lady this past week. As I was on the phone with her daughter, talking about the songs that they were going to sing, find out what songs they were going to sing, she gave me the name of the songs and then the artist. And oftentimes that's important because many artists will sing different song, a song sung by different, many different artists. And you want this, a certain artist singing a certain song. So she told me the name of the song and the artist. So I wrote it down and then I gave it to Mike. Well, I don't remember the name of the song, but, but the artist was Aunt Sharon. Mike questioned that at first, and then I, I think he went looking for it. Uh, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, I don't know. But, but it wasn't Aunt Sharon, it was like Ed Sharon or something like that. <laughs> what I heard was Aunt Sharon, and that's what I wrote down. And so I'm sending Mike on a wild goose chase. But to show you how good he is, he still found the song and the artist. But false teachings come in oftentimes that same way. Somebody hears something a little bit different or somebody has a different idea and, and they take off with it and we come with false teachings. And in 1 John chapter 5, verses 6 to 13 today, we're going to see three testimonies of God about who Jesus is. God the Father in three different ways shows us and tells us who Jesus is. What's a testimony? A testimony is somebody giving witness. In these verses, we're going to see three ways God shows us and tells us who Jesus is. Before we begin, I want us to pray. And maybe there's some of us out here who are struggling in our faith. Maybe we're not, maybe we've gone to church all our life, but we're still not sure that we're saved. We're still not sure about Jesus. We haven't nailed that down yet. Today, would you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you? And just take God's word and trust God at what God says. Not what me or anybody else says about God's word, but what does God's word say? Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for your love for us. Thank you, Father, that you give us life, but most of all, you offer us eternal life to all who put their faith and trust in your son, Jesus. And it is your great desire that we all come to know you. Lord, you tell us that in your word. Father, this morning we speak Jesus. We speak the Jesus will, will speak to us through the Holy Spirit. For anyone who's struggling to give assurance to those who don't know you, Jesus, that today they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. Father, speak to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, the first way, look at verse 6, 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. It says, this is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. Well, that's a mouthful. What is he saying here? Well, this is the one. This is one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. This is the one who came. There is one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Jesus tells us that. He doesn't say this is one of the many. He says this is the one, the one, and he identifies him by saying Jesus Christ, meaning Jesus as the Messiah. But this is the one who came by water and blood. What does that mean? Well, a lot of people come up with a lot of ideas. What do you think it means? Came, Jesus came by water and blood. Some people think it means physical birth and everything. From biblical scholars and everything that I've read, and studied, this, is, this is what I think makes the most sense. Came by water means it's talking about his baptism, his physical water baptism. Hold your spot there and turn to Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 3, verses 13 to 17. Matthew 3, 13 to 17. Jesus has, he's grown up at home. Somewhere along the line, his father, Joseph, his earthly father, Joseph, has probably died. And Jesus is now ready to begin his ministry. 
Matthew chapter 4, verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan, the Jordan River, to be baptized by John. This is John the Baptist. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper to do this. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. What Jesus is saying is, this is what the Father has told us to do. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. God has testified that Jesus is his son. He did it at his baptism. It wasn't just the, 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 a picture of the Holy Spirit coming on Jesus. The Holy Spirit was already there. But it was that voice that must have thundered from heaven. This is my son whom I love, whom I am well pleased in. That's one of the ways that that God tells us who Jesus is. And somebody say, well, that's, the Bible says that. What if the Bible's not true? Okay. What if the Bible is not true? Is the Bible true? Are you sure? <laughs> it is true, isn't it? Well, you say, how do you know? Well, it says that it is. Oh, come on now. Just because it says it is doesn't make it true. No, it doesn't. But people have tried for hundreds of years to prove the Bible wrong. They've not been able to do so. They have not found errors in the Bible. They've not found any truth in the Bible. The, the places, the people, the kings, the wars, all the things they have found, you can go back in history and you can document those. They are all in here. There are prophecies. You go to the book of Daniel. We went through Daniel a few years ago. My goodness. There's no way a man could have known and written down what was written down. It had to have been God. You take any book written by over 40 different people and you're going to have a bunch of mistakes. You're going to have things that don't fit together. This book, 66 books over 40 different authors, fits together so perfectly. It had to have one main author and that was God. So here's an evidence right here. God says, Jesus is my son. Now there are, Buddha, did God ever say that about Buddha? Did he ever say that about Muhammad? Did he ever say that about anybody else? No, no. God said that about one person, and that's Jesus, his baptism there. And so he came by water, his baptism, and also by blood. Well, what would the blood be talking about? I think pretty clearly he's talking about his crucifixion on the cross. Turn to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27, verse 45. Jesus has met with his disciples in the upper room. They've had the Last Supper. They've gone to the Mount of Olives. Jesus has been arrested. He's been taken. He's been illegally tried, beaten, whipped carried his cross to, the, to Golgotha and is on the cross. Verse 45, from the sixth hour, that would be noon, noontime, until the ninth hour, which would be 3 p.m., darkness came over all the land. Now, today, we're going to get out here pretty close to noon. From noon to 3, if it is dark outside, would you be wondering what's going on? It might be cloudy. But if it was dark, would you be concerned? How many of you were here, uh, how many of you remember the, the 99 tornado came through here? Remember the sky? It looked different. Didn't know what was going on, but something was different because the sky looked different. From noon till three, there was darkness, it says, filled the land. About the ninth hour, three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, 
and offered it to Jesus to drink. But the rest said, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. They're looking for some sign, something to, that something miraculous is happening here. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. Verse 51, at that moment, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Jesus has just died on the cross. He's not lingering there. He has died. He's dead on the cross. They're getting ready to take his body down, wrap it in cloths, put it in a tomb. He's died on the cross, and the moment he died, says the curtain was torn in two, the curtain in the temple, separating the holy place from the most holy place where the Jews, God, resided. Well, that curtain wasn't a thin curtain like we'd have in our homes. It was several inches thick, and it was high. And to tear it from top to bottom would have taken a supernatural strength. At the moment Jesus died, that curtain tore it. And, and you say, well, you sure that happened? At the time this was written, the priests in the temple, people that would know whether it really happened or not, they could have said, no, that's not true. You don't find that anywhere in history. They do not dispute the fact that that happened. So one sign was, was the curtain torn from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rock split. There was a big earthquake. And then the tombs broke open. What are in tombs? Dead people. And the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the, what? That's it? Well, what happened then? Did they go on living and die again? Did they go straight to heaven? What happened? God doesn't tell us. That's one of the questions, that's one of the things I can't wait to sit down and, hey, what happened there? I want, isn't, isn't that interesting? Wow. How would you like to have been in Jerusalem? And Aunt Sharon <laughs> came to you, but she had died several years ago. That'd wake you up, wouldn't it? Well, it's in the afternoon. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, so you probably wouldn't be sleeping. But suddenly you see somebody, you ever see, you go places and you see people that look, you think they look familiar, except this really would be at Sharon. 54, verse 54, when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. This centurion is a Roman soldier. He didn't believe in God, he didn't believe in Jesus. His job was to carry out the crucifixion. And he's watching what's going on. He watched how Jesus handled himself on the cross. He watched, of course, he couldn't see the, the veil being, but he, the earthquake that happened, the darkness, the earthquake, all of that said, man, this isn't a normal person. This is different. Surely he must be the son of God. God testified through Jesus' baptism the loud voice, this is my son, whom I love. I'm well pleased. God testified at his crucifixion with miraculous things happening. And then God also testified, says in verse six, he did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who testifies because the spirit is truth. The third way God testifies that Jesus is the son of God is through the Holy Spirit. Well, how does he do that? You know, Jesus talking to his disciples, he said, I'm going away and it's good that I go away because if I go away, I will send the Holy Spirit. He says, because if I'm here, I can only be with you guys right here. I can't be anywhere else. I can physically only be one place. But if I go away, the Holy Spirit can go with all of you wherever you go. See, when we're born, we're born with, a, we, we, have a, we are a soul. We're a soul. We have a body and we have a spirit. There's a spirit inside of us. And until the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us when we accept Christ as our Savior, that spirit just lays in there kind of dom uh, dormant, just, just laying there, not really doing anything. The Bible talks about a dead spirit. It just lays there. But when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us, he brings our spirit to life. When you first accepted Jesus, 
Do you remember reading the Bible and things starting to make sense? That's part of bringing us to life. You heard, you thought of something that you wouldn't normally think. Maybe it was a warning to not go to a certain place or not do a certain thing. And that was the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Maybe it was an encouragement. Call somebody. And you call them and you find out, wow, I didn't know that was going on. Well, that was the Holy Spirit speaking to you, making your spirit alive. Is your spirit alive today? If you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, it is. Your spirit is alive because it's through the Holy Spirit. So God has testified through his baptism, through his crucifixion, and also through the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 9, or I'm sorry, verse uh, 7. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. Now, if you have the King James Version, there, there's more there, and we can talk about that another time. But the key, the most important thing here, what John is trying to combat, he's trying to combat these false teachings that say Jesus didn't really have a body. Jesus wasn't, it wasn't really Jesus on the cross. He, he did have a body. The, the, the coming by water, he was baptized. God said, this is my son. He was the son of God. By blood, crucified on the cross, he did die a physical death and was buried. And then the Holy Spirit speaking of that. And then, and then verse nine, God testified who Jesus is. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given us about his son. Think of the number of times we accept what people say about things that aren't nearly as important. How many times have you canceled something because the weatherman said it was going to rain or snow? It may have rained or snow, maybe it didn't. How many times have you heard something about somebody and you repeated it? Or you believed it without knowing for sure that it was true? Sometimes we're quick to accept what a person says. God says, Jesus is my son. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Verse 10. Anyone who believes in the Son of God, Jesus, has this testimony in his heart. Has what testimony? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit testifies. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a what? A liar. Do you want to call God a liar? I don't. There's a whole lot of people I don't want to call a liar. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his son. God tells us who Jesus is. Those three ways and other ways. So when somebody dies and they have not accepted Christ as their Savior, they said, no, I don't believe in Jesus. What they've done is they say, God, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. And basically what they're doing is calling God a liar because God has said it and they said, I don't believe it. Have you ever had something, the truth, you had something that was the truth and you told somebody and they say, you know, I just, I really want to believe you, but I just can't. What are they saying? They say, you're lying. I really want to believe you. I really want to believe you. Leroy, I really want to believe how big that fish was. I really want to believe you, but I don't see a picture. You don't really believe me, do you? I guess that's what I'm saying, isn't it? See, when, when we question in our minds whether Jesus really is the Son of God, what we're saying is, I choose to not believe God. I choose to call him a liar. Well, no, I'm not calling him a liar. I just don't know for sure. No, what we're saying, anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. There was a man who went to church and he, he struggled. He was a good man, really a good man. He, he struggled a lot with his, his faith. He'd always heard about Jesus and he said, you know, I, I, I want to believe. 
I want to believe that Jesus is who he says he is, but I, I just don't know. I, I, I just don't know if he really is or not. I want to believe it. He went to church that day, and he, he heard John chapter 1, verse 12, and it says, as many as received him, Jesus, to them he, Jesus, gave power to become sons of God. He also heard John 3, 36. He that believes on the Son has eternal life. The man went home. He said, God, I'm, I'm, this, this is eating me up. I don't know what to do. I want to believe you, God, but I'm just so uncertain. I'm so uncertain. God, help me to know. And so this man who wasn't sure whether he was saved or not went home and he, he searched his Bible and 1 John is a great place to go for that assurance. And he ran across verse 11. 1 John chapter 5, 11. And this is the testimony. And he put his hand over the rest of it. And he said, God, this is your testimony. And if I don't believe what these next verses, next words say, I'm calling you a liar. God, I don't want to call you a liar. God, help me to see. And then after that, and this is the testimony, it says, God has given us eternal life. Who is the giver of eternal life? God. And this life is in his son. How do we get eternal life? It's through Jesus and only through Jesus. It's not joining a church. It's not being baptized. It's, not, it's a relationship with Jesus Christ. He who has the Son has life. So if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, you believe that he is the Son of God and you put your faith and trust in him and you told him that and asked him to come into your life and save you. But I haven't done this and this and this. Well, the Bible says that if you have the Son, you have life. And he who has the Son has life doesn't say he who has the Son will have eternal life. He said has life. See, our eternity began when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It began then. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have eternal life. If you read the Bible and you say, no, I don't believe this, you're calling God a liar. You say, well, it sounds bad that way. Yeah, it does. Because it is. It is bad. And he thought about that and he said, you know what? God, you're right. I do believe that Jesus is your son. Take away my doubts. And from that moment on, he had a peace that he'd never experienced before. This morning, maybe you're struggling. You're struggling in your faith. You're struggling with, God, I want to believe you. No. No, if we want to believe God, we can it's a matter of a will. It's a matter of choice. We choose to believe God or we choose not to believe God. And then look at verse 13. John says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. A lot of people say, well, you can't really know. Have you ever heard that? You can't really know if you're saved or not. That is a lie. Yes, you can know. How do we know that? Because he tells us right here. Now, some days we're a good example of a believer and some days we're not. But he doesn't say, he who has good days has life. He who has bad days does not have life. He doesn't say that. He says, he who has the Son has life. So the question today, do you know Jesus as your Savior? So many people, so many people go to church the whole life and they never settle that, that issue. Believe God in what he said. The man that was baptized in obedience to his father, God said, this is my son. I am well pleased. Remember the transfiguration, Jesus. Peter, James, and John were there. Peter said, Master, let me build altar here for you guys. And a voice thundered from heaven. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. 
Listen to him. Do you know Jesus? There's a lot we don't know, but we know enough. Do you know Jesus as your savior? He loves you. He knows everything about you, and he loves you. If you don't know Jesus today, would you ask him to come into your life and save you? Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Do you believe who he, he is, who he said he is, and that he's coming again? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love for us. Thank you, Father, that you've told us who Jesus is. You didn't leave us to wonder. You've made it clear. The only thing left is us making that decision. And Father, for those who have made that decision, we just simply praise you and worship you today. For those who have heard it over and over and over again, maybe they've even been baptized, but they haven't settled that. Father, we speak Jesus today because Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. Father, today, would you help them to say, yes, God, I believe you. And Father, for those who said, no, no I, I don't buy this, then Father, would you speak to them through your Holy Spirit that they may know they may know beyond the shadow of a doubt that is you speaking to them. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. If you know Christ as your Savior, worship. Worship him. If you don't, the invitation is open. Come. Maybe God will put somebody on your heart and says, I need you to go pray with so-and-so. Why? Well, maybe they need it. Maybe you need it. We just listen and be obedient to whatever he tells you to do while we sing.